Hi there. Now, it's very common to find that you're given a probability density function and asked to find the value of a positive constant k. And that is the aim of this particular tutorial, just to demonstrate how it's done. I've got two in this series. The first one is just going to deal with f of x, where you have essentially got one equation. And in the next example, I'll be looking at f of x, where we've got two equations for part of the curve. OK, the method is much the same, but uh, it just gives you further practice. So with this example, we've got f of x equals k times all of 2x plus 3, where x is valued between minus 1 and 2 inclusive, and then it's 0 otherwise. And we've got to find then the value of this constant k. Now what I would always suggest you do, although sometimes you might be, even be asked to do it, and that is to sketch the probability density curve. Okay. It does help because quite often you'll find that there's an easy way of doing it, which I'll show you in this example. But the general way is always just to integrate f of x with respect to x, and that will be over the limits that we've got. And that represents the area under the graph, which we should know comes to 1. So the general way then would just be to integrate f of x with respect to x between the limits in this particular example between minus 1 and 2. So put those in minus 1 and 2 and we know that it will come to 1. And if there was a question which involved several equations we would total those integrations between the respective limits and that should come to 1. Doing this, what we've got then is k times all of 2x plus 3 for f of x. Now k being a constant, you don't have to do this, but it's easier if you put it outside the integral. So we've got k times the integral of f of x, that's all of 2x plus 3. And that's integrated then with respect to x, and that will come to 1. And we're integrating that between the limits minus 1 and 2. And integrating this in the usual way, we therefore have k times, and I'll just put this in square brackets, integrating 2x with respect to x gives us x squared, and the 3 just gives us 3x. So finish off that square bracket there, and put in our limits between minus 1 and 2, and that should equal 1. So if we substitute our limits in first of all then putting in the 2 we've got 2 squared then that's 4 plus 3 times 2 that's 6 and then from that we subtract what we get when we put minus 1 through so minus 1 squared is 1 and you've got 3 times minus 1 that's going to be minus 3 and if you work that out okay you should find it comes to 12 so we get 12k equals 1. What I'll do, though, is I'll just come down this edge here. And so what we have got then is 12k. So therefore, 12k equals the 1. And clearly, if we divide both sides by 12, we end up with k equaling 1 12. So that, as I say, is the general method. It's going to always work for any one of these types of questions. But if we stop off and just sketch the probability density function, for this one anyway, let's just draw our x-axis out. Okay, So we've got our x-axis and we've got f of x. Just put that in there. f of x. We're going between minus 1 and 2. So I put minus 1 there. And we'll have two there. This is not totally drawn to scale, but uh, hopefully it will give you an idea. I'll just extend that back there a bit. Now, I find that quite a lot of people say, I can't sketch the graph because I don't know what k is. But that doesn't matter. 
Okay, what you've got here is in this example 2x plus 3, a linear function. So it's going to be a straight line and it's got a positive gradient of 2. All that k is going to do is just effectively stretch it uh, parallel to this axis, this vertical axis here. So what we've got then is when x is minus 1, you're going to get minus 2 plus 3, so that's going to give us 1k. So all I need to do is put a point here, say, let's put the coordinates in, it's minus 1 and it's k. All right? When we go across to 2, we know it's going to be a straight line, okay, so I only need this far point here. So when x is 2, we've got 2 2s of 4, plus 3 is 7, 7k. 7 so it would normally be a lot higher than this if I drew it to scale, but that's not the point here. I just want to give you an idea, okay. And so in between here, it's a straight line, and it's 0 otherwise, so it's going to be 0 there and 0 out there. You could join this up with, say, a dotted line. That's up to you, okay? But there's our graph. Now, what I've got here is a nice geometrical shape, a trapezium. So when it comes to working out k, I don't have to go through integration, okay? The method I can use, we'll put or here, the method I can use then is just the fact that we've got the area of a trapezium and that area is going to equal 1. So let's just put area of a trapezium. I'm assuming you're familiar with working out the area of a trapezium and that is that you do half the sum of the parallel sides. The parallel sides would be these two here and so that's going to be k plus the height here 7k so it's half the sum of the parallel sides times the distance apart. And the distance apart would be the distance between these two parallel lines. A total of three units. Okay, so put three there. And that's our area and it should equal one. So what we've got then is 8k here. 8k times three is 24k and halve it, you've got a total of 12k. So we're straight away at that answer, 12k equals 1, that we had up here. And obviously, k equals 112. So the point I want to make then is that this method is the general method, will always work, but in particular cases, you might well find that you've got a nice geometrical shape. And so therefore, you could use the area of that geometrical shape to your advantage. OK, just it'll be a bit quicker. Well, as I said earlier, in the next video, what I'll be doing is looking at another probability density function, which has got two equations in. And uh, it is to your advantage to sketch the probability density function. So you know, I'd encourage you to take a look at that video, all right? It should give you a lot more insight into this.